Welcome to the Produce Moms Podcast, where we believe there is a produce mom in all of us. I'm Lori Taylor, founder and CEO of the Produce Moms. For 10 years, I sold fresh produce to over 300 grocery stores in the U.S. And today, my team and I are fully focused on inspiring people to eat more fruits and vegetables. This show is just one of the ways that we hope to inspire you and your family to eat more produce and live a better life. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, join our community of almost 40,000 in all 50 states and over 30 countries by visiting theproducemoms.com slash subscribe. And be sure to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. Thanks for being here. Enjoy today's show. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. This is the Produce Moms podcast, and I'm Lori. I love hosting this show. I say it every week, but I really do love it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this. Thank you to everyone who has taken the time to rate, review, uh, leave a comment about what the podcast has meant to you. I, I recently, just this past week, I went through and read some of those. It just warms my heart. It validates what we do. And I'm so proud of our guests that have made this show possible. And I'm so thankful for you, our listeners. So thank you again for being here. Today's show is going to be so much fun because we're talking about potatoes. Like everyone loves potatoes. Um, (laughs) in my household, there is a joke. It's the, it's the perfect vegetable. And I know everyone's seen the meme where it makes every like name, another vegetable that can do all these things that potatoes do, right? Like your baked potatoes, your French fries, vodka, like you name it, like the potato is king. Um, but <laughs> I am, I'm so thrilled today. Our, our guest is the CEO of the Idaho Potato Commission. Uh, Mr. Jamie Hyam is our guest today. And I just had the pleasure of meeting Jamie and you all are going to absolutely enjoy getting to know him and learning more about what's happening at the Idaho Potato Commission. And we are coming at you now because February is Idaho Potato Lovers Month. So of course, that means here on the Produce Moms podcast, we got to welcome the CEO of the Idaho Potato Commission. Jamie, welcome to the show. We're glad you're here. Thanks for having me. Of course. Thank you so much for being here. So uh, I really feel like you need you need to introduce yourself because you're relatively new to the IPC and we're glad you're here. But please tell our listeners a bit more about your professional background and and uh, your current role at the Idaho Potato Commission. Sure. Um, I'll probably slip in a little personal into my background, too, because it has to do with potatoes. Well, that's perfect. uh, I was born and raised in Shelley, Idaho. And uh, so is my wife. And it's uh, one of the little towns right in the heart of Idaho potato country. In fact, uh, the schools there still get out for two weeks in the fall for potato for potato harvest. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. Everybody pitches in. In fact, um, when I was in high school, my wife was Miss Russet. And, uh, and the mascot for the school that we attended and my, uh, and that my, my older kids attended as well, they're the Shelly Russets. So I've got some potato DNA in my, uh, in my blood. I love that. Gotta love it. That's yeah. wonderful. So it's not just in yours though. It's your whole family culture. It is. It Jamie, is. you're exactly where you're meant to be as the I, CEO I, of the Idaho I, Potato I, Commission. All right, keep going. This is, I agree. this is it, your intro, not mine. Yeah. All right. In, uh, <laughs> I started in the potato industry in 1991. Uh, I worked for a company called Walker Produce uh, in Manan, Idaho. Started out in the quality control part of the business and, uh, you know, moved up, did some logistics and a little bit of sales. And then I moved on to a company called Patan and Produce in the, uh, in the, after a few years and did sales there. Left in the mid 90s to go back to graduate school. Uh, I went to a school called Thunderbird in Arizona, an international business school, and uh, worked for Ford Motor Company after that in their marketing, sales, and service division. And then in 2002, I, uh, I was lured back into the potato industry uh, at Patandon, and I was there for about uh, 13 years and uh, ran another potato company called Farm Fresh Direct uh, up until just a few weeks ago. So I'm in my third week on the job at the Idaho Potato Commission, excited and honored to have this position. And it's uh, it's a great opportunity to help, you know, represent the uh, grown in Idaho brand. I'd say so. And if you married Miss Russet, like you deserve this too, for that I alone. Do. I do, I do. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh no, it's amazing. Well, thank you for sharing that. Thank you so much for sharing the family background and, you know, just the background about where y'all are from, because I think that really just paints a beautiful picture for our listeners about how, um, you know, in these iconic ag regions like Idaho, you know, synonymous with potatoes. For, I mean, I grew up in Indiana and I've always known that, um, you know, when people say Idaho, like I think potatoes first. They do. Yes. They do. I was, I was, I was on an airplane a few weeks ago and somebody sat down next to me and I always get, you know, the small talk out of the way. And, uh, and the person asked me, where are you from? And I said, Idaho. And they said, what do you do? And I said, guess. And they're like, no. And I said, no, I do. And they said, no. And I said, no, I really do. And she goes, no. And I said, yeah, I do. And so we had this conversation and she knew I was in the potato industry and we didn't even have to say the word potato. Isn't that amazing? And it's so true. It is really, I think that, uh, and that really is a tip of the hat to what you all have done at the Idaho Potato Commission to turn an entire state into being synonymous with, you know, a big agricultural commodity that you grow in. And it's more than a commodity. It's truly a brand. Um, so let's talk now about the Idaho Potato Commission. What is it? What's the commission's purpose? Here you are in the hot seat, not even a month on the job, Jamie. Tell us all about it. Like we wanted, I'm putting you to the test with your sure. CEO role. <laughs> sure. So, so like I said, the the role of the commission is to um, you know lead, promote, and protect that uh, grown in Idaho seal. And the commission it has nine members, and uh, five of those members are po actual potato growers. They're farmers that grow potatoes. Uh, two members are shippers or packers. They 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 represent the people that pack the potatoes and ship them all over the world. And then two the other two commissioners are from the uh, processing world. So it may it, it might be a dehydrating company or a frozen French fry company. And yeah. so together they make up the leadership of the commission, and and I report to them. And uh, like I said, we're out there trying to promote and to protect the, that uh, Idaho potato seal. Yes. And it has really grown to have such deep purpose and meaning. Uh, it's a logo that people identify. It's a logo that people trust. And it's a logo that immediately makes people feel like they're getting a premium product. that's going to taste great, you know? Yeah. Um, and I know that's, that's a, that comes from decades of hard work at the commission level to create that type of a brand um, and consumer awareness. So right now, um, is February. The show's, you know, this show is publishing in February. We're talking a little bit like right before February, but we are, we are right now in the heart of potato lovers month. So tell us a little bit more about February being Idaho potatoes lovers month. What does this mean? Why should people care? Why do you care? Let's hear more about Idaho potato lovers month. So it's probably just over 50 years ago, February was declared as Potato Lovers Month. And then um, about 30 years ago, it became Idaho Potato, Idaho Potato Lovers Month. Um, and it kind of coincided with the, uh, we run a promotion every Potato Lovers Month where uh, it's a retail display promotion where um grocery store produce managers can build a display promoting Idaho potatoes and they, and they need to include, you know, some dehydrated potatoes in it, sure. to be all the little check marks, but that's, that's what started this. And today we'll have probably over 5,000 entries in the contest. Wow. And I'd be happy to share if you want sometime some of the pictures of those displays, because they build mountains of potatoes. We definitely want the pictures. Yeah. You know, this, this pot, yeah. we always do blogs with our podcast. So send the pictures. We'll include yeah. them in the blog. If you're right. connecting with us just on the audible side of the show, head on over to the producemoms.com. We'll have pictures of, of these displays that Jamie's talking about, but yes, send the yeah. pictures, Jamie, we want them. And, and so er everybody that uh, enters the contest gets a, you know, a, a prize of some kind. And then the winners, there's, there's different kinds of, it's some of it's cash, some of it's different, you know, different articles, but it's, it's, it's exciting. And, and they, and a lot of these produce managers really love it and they get into it. And the reason it started is because traditionally February was a slow month for potato sales. And so right. they, they started this promotion and now, you know, excluding the Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays, February is the, is the next busiest time of the year. And, wow. uh, and they've actually expanded it into March a little bit because the demand is so good. And you, you'll see a lot of, 
you know, ads running and yeah. uh, promotions at the, at the store level and the regional level. And uh, it's turned into a really fun, uh, fun thing for, for our industry and for the people that are trying to sell our potatoes at retail. For sure. Wow. Well, someone was really smart by, de- by taking over February as Idaho Potato Lovers Month, considering mm-hmm. it's had that kind of an effect on the sales. Um, and I can tell you from a shopper's point of view, it's, it's a ton of fun when you walk into a grocery store and see these big displays. So Mm -hmm. now for everyone who's listening to the, to, to this broadcast, you can kind of understand the business side of how a lot of those displays come together. Oftentimes it's a direct result of a retail of a retailer's relationship with a commodity board or a brand that is bringing forward, um, you know, an incentive, so to say, for the retailer and their 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 team to to really do something that's eye catching and and you know grand and scale to promote one specific product line. So this is this is the business side of how those different those different displays come to life in the produce department. And really, this is a you know this isn't like a novel concept to the produce industry. You can see this throughout the entire grocery store when you're shopping. Um, all right. So let's talk about, uh, like, I have to ask you the question, why Idaho? Like, why is Idaho such a famous place for potatoes? How does this, how did we get here to where the woman who's sitting (laughs) next to you on the plane, like you say you're from Idaho and she knows right away what industry you work in. So, uh, you know, help us understand availability, affordability, versatility, climate, like, what is it? We, you know, I'll say it starts with the climate to grow potatoes, to go, to grow good potatoes. You need warm days and cool nights. And so, and that's what we have. And we have great soil here. We like to say that it's, you know, if you look out to the, to the West of where most of the potatoes uh, in Idaho are grown, you see these old extinct volcanoes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we say it's the cool, you know, the, warm days, cool nights, and the rich volcanic ash soil that we have in Idaho, that is the perfect climate for growing potatoes. And we have, you know, generational farms of people that grow our potatoes. And it is, uh, you know, it's a, it's an art form being able to grow good potatoes. And our farmers have done a great job learning over the years, how to grow the best potatoes with the best quality. They've learned how to store them. uh, And they've, and we've learned how to ship them to, uh, they, you know, they end up all over the world. Um, but that it's, it's, it's location and the, and the people that we have growing and that set us apart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100%. So let's talk about the, the crop cycle too, because I think this is kind of a phenomenon for consumers to understand, you know, the availability of Idaho potatoes for us to have Idaho potatoes year round. Like what does that take? So they, they plant in the spring. And then harvest starts late summer. And let's just say for, uh, let's just say the first part of August. And most of those potatoes that are harvested early in August go right, uh, right to a processor or to a packing facility. And then as they get a little bit further into the harvest, they start to put them away in storage. Mm -hmm. And so harvest usually ends around the 10th of October. If you, if you go too long, um, if you don't get them harvested in time, then you're risking the chance of freezing weather, damaging the crops. So, and even if you're, and sometimes it comes earlier as well. Right. So yeah, it's, it's a risky, it's a risky business. And yeah. uh, so they get them, they have them all undercover by usually the middle of uh, October. And then they're shipping them out of these uh, state of the art storages uh, the rest of the year. And then they usually run out, you know, late July. And just in time for the next ones so in time for, and then that's why, I mean, I sat at the sales desk for 10 years at wholesale mm-hmm. distribution stage of the supply chain. And mm-hmm. I, I, I kind of learned, um, from our potato, uh, category manager, the, the concept of new crop potatoes, like it's a really big deal when you get yeah. into that new crop. Um, you know, that's really when everything starts over, like the prices go up and all that. Now I will say from a consumer point of view, I think potato, I mean, I think they lead in affordability of not just the produce department, but I mean, frankly, Jamie, I think they're the most affordable thing in the whole grocery store. I agree. Um, And and versatile too. Totally. You can do so much. You can, 
you know, I'll sound like a, an old movie thing. You can hash browns. Um, no, bake, say um, it. This will be this will be a perfect soundbite. We'll promote the <laughs> yeah, show this way. Yeah. You go, the, you go. The, you know, hash browns, <laughs> French fries, baked potatoes. The the list just goes on and on <laughs> and on. A gratin, you know, uh, mm. twice baked. Um, but it it is something that is very affordable, and it's in and, and it's nutritious. And I super I think nutritious. People, people sometimes overlook that. Um, yes. I, my favorite way to eat a potato is baked with, with a little bit of butter and sour cream and salt and pepper. Um, but, that, but that's me. Um, mm -hmm. I also like my French fries and it's, uh, it's, that's one of the good things about being back home in Idaho is there's a, it's mostly a Idaho thing, but a little bit of Utah as well. We have a thing called fry sauce and, mm -hmm. uh, that's what you, you, everywhere you get fries in Idaho, you have fry sauce and mm -hmm. it, it's basically mayonnaise and ketchup and someone put a little pickle juice or something in it to make it a little, uh, a little tangy. Terrible. Yeah. You get it, you get it everywhere here. And that's, a, that's one of the things that I love about Idaho is our, our unique approach to French fries with fry sauce, but oh, yeah. um, anyway, that's me. No, I love it. Okay. So I feel like I have to tell you my favorite way to eat potatoes. So I absolutely love, um, I like roasted potatoes, you know, toss them in olive oil or avocado oil, put them in a cast iron skillet, pop them in the oven, season them all the different ways. Right. Like I've done, I've done like just a traditional salt pepper, maybe add some garlic. I love doing like a Chinese five spice on them. I mean, you can, to your point about versatility, for sure. I mean, I even put like blackening season on them or like Old Bay, so yummy. Mm -hmm. um, we probably serve those at the Taylor house for dinner at least three times a week. Like it's a true household favorite. Um, I also love the fact that with the household that has, you know, I have a, I have two middle school boys. So the demand for food just goes up and up and up every single day. And, um, and like potatoes are such their household favorite and everyone's happy when I serve them and it doesn't break the bank at the grocery store. Um, but we should probably talk about that a little. I mean, the price of groceries is definitely going up. I mean, everyone listening to this show knows that, I mean, you're seeing it for yourself, you know, it working in the supply chain, we know it at the produce moms and our seeing it with all the growers that we work with. Um, and certainly from our audience feedback, like what is, you know, what is going on? Um, I believe it, it really just comes down to the supply chain issues, but I want to give you the opportunity to share what you would like about, um, you know, about what recent times have like the implications that it's had on Idaho potatoes um, and how Idaho potatoes are still so well positioned, despite the, the retail climate that we're dealing with right now. Sure. So um, when COVID first started, um, we and, and restaurants started to close down, mm -hmm. we could not pack enough potatoes in the United States to fill the retail demand. In fact, it was right. being, they were being, because it's kind of a hardware item, you can buy potatoes and you don't have to use them right away. You can set them in a cool, dark place in your pantry or wherever, and, right. and, they'll, and they'll last a little while. And people were, were stocking up uh, and getting ready to, you know, hunker down for who knows how long at that time. And potatoes were just like toilet paper. You couldn't keep them on the shelves. Right. And so, and then as, as we went through those first three or four months, and then, uh, and then restaurants and, you know, some of the fast food places started to open up again, it flipped. And all of a sudden the French fries demand went through the roof because everybody was doing takeout. And, and I don't know if you happened to be in line at a fast food restaurant during that, but it, the lines were around the block. Oh for it. yeah. 45 minute wait Chick-fil-A every day. Any time yeah, I didn't know if I yes. could say that, but that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and, uh, and it went crazy. And all of a sudden, some of the people that thought they had too many supplies for making fries all of a sudden didn't have enough. And the demand has remained pretty good throughout this whole, the whole pandemic. Now, this last growing season for the potatoes that are in storage right now here in Idaho, we had some growing challenges. It got really hot in the middle of the growing season. And then we had forest fires in the West and it, and it kind of put a haze over the, over the growing area for a while. And it, and it reduced our yields in some areas, not all, but in some areas. And so overall our crop is a little smaller in yield than it was. And so right now there's not quite enough potatoes to meet the needs. Um, but then we also have, um, we have 
transportation issues because of, it's the it's all the supply chain that you mentioned. There's not enough trucks to get our potatoes to where they need to be, and so it's created some some demand that's really good. And we're and our guy our 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 shippers and our growers are very creative in finding solutions. But it's a challenge right now to get our potatoes from point A to point B. It's happening. There's not a shortage sure. anywhere. Yeah, sure. But it, it's a challenge right now because we ship a lot, mostly by trucks, a lot of a lot of rail cars as well. And then mm-hmm. there's some ocean going containers on some export stuff. But that whole uh, labor um, transportation issue has been a challenge. And then we, we're we also dealing with the increasing costs of our, 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 our crop that's going to be planted this spring and grown this upcoming season is going to be very expensive because things like fertilizer labor right. is it's all it's all it's all a victim of this same inflation that we're seeing in everything else and so this will be a uh, and a uh this will be a challenge for this upcoming year the input costs are, are very high and it makes it risky for our potato growers because they you yeah. know they're still it's still potatoes if you're not on a, under a contract it's still kind of lives and dies by that supply and demand world. If you grow too many, you know, the price is low. If you don't grow enough, the price is high. And so anyway, it's it's gonna be a challenging year in front of us. Yeah. Well, if I know anyone who can meet a challenge, it's our farmers. So I agree. I agree. um, Very innovative. Truth. Yes. So um, you know, I one thing that we say it often on this show, but um it's it's important to state it again right now. Food security is the ultimate national security and everyone that I've met and been so fortunate to get to know in this industry, you know, that's a, that's a driving factor for what we all do um, here in the American agriculture system. So uh, hats off to everyone in Idaho who's part of that. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work. Um, Thank you for bringing those potatoes to my dinner table at least three times a week, if not more. Um, And I love a breakfast hash brown too, but Hey, (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so, I mean, it sounds like, yes, it's going to be a challenging year, but consumers still can count on their Idaho potatoes to be that affordable, accessible, available choice that, you know, will always be, you know, for the most part, like you can find them in the produce department. Yeah. Always. And if they have potatoes from somewhere else, they can always ask say, you need to bring Idaho potatoes in here. That's true. That's true. And we have an entire blog dedicated to that, folks. If you don't know about how you can uh, request products at the grocery store, just go to theproducemoms.com and search that in our search bar, how to request products at grocery. It'll come right up. We have even done all the research for you, like the top 50 grocers throughout the United States. We've got all their contact forms linked and uh, their social media handles, their phone numbers, if you'd prefer to call. Uh, So we've made that process really easy for you. Your grocery store wants to make sure that you have that that their shoppers have everything they need right there in their store. They do not want you shop in the competition to get your needs. So for sure, to Jamie's point, you ask for those Idaho potatoes and, and don't be surprised when you see them on shelf after your request, because <laughs> there is there's more customer service and power than you realize in grocery retail. So um, all right. So we what what do you want shoppers to um expect i mean so idaho potatoes potato lovers month you mentioned there's these big displays what i mean what do you what does the idaho potato commission want your households and shoppers to know uh that that idaho potatoes are a like we said a very versatile healthy choice um breakfast lunch and dinner and uh you know we we uh I always want to put a plug in for our farm families out here in Idaho. They, you know, they work hard. They, uh, it's a risky business to be in. And uh, we appreciate the support that we have all over the United States. Um, They're going to be, they're going to, what they can expect is a high quality, um, delicious, uh, flavorful and uh, healthy eating choice. I agree. Okay. And so we've already talked about some of our favorite ways to enjoy Idaho potatoes and the versatility of them, but let's talk about that, that what you want consumers to know once they buy the Idaho potatoes on shelf, Mm -hmm. they bring that bag home to their home kitchen. What do they do with it? How do they store it? How do they wash it? How do they get those Idaho potatoes ready? So a couple of things. 
Uh, first of all, don't don't store them in the refrigerator. If, if you resist the urge to put them in the refrigerator, um, potatoes have a tendency this uh, they just don't store well there. Uh, it's right. a starches and sugars thing, and uh, put them somewhere that's cool and dark. Um, if you have potatoes in the light, uh, they have a tendency to start turning green, and so and you don't really want that. So keep them in a cool, dark place, and. Uh, and they'll be ready to go when, when you need to use them to cook. And you need to wash them. Wash them first. Yep. And, but you wash them right before you cook them, not before you store them. Yeah. Correct. Right. You want to leave the little, you want to leave them how they are when you buy them until just before you're ready to use them. You know, if you want to, if you want to peel them a day before you can store them in water in the refrigerator or something mm-hmm. like that, but not, not too long-term. Yep. I agree. That's, I always, that's a good tip. I always peel my potatoes the night before Thanksgiving for my mashed potatoes. One less thing to do on Thanksgiving day, right? 100%. And then I just store them overnight and like some chicken stock. And then I cook them, boil them up the next day in that, in that liquid. Um, so great tips. Thank you so much for that, Jamie. Uh, it's going to be another wonderful Idaho potato lovers month, everyone. Uh, truly one of my, one of my personal favorites, one of our household favorites, a favorite of everyone at the produce moms, but, uh, you know, we've got plenty of inspiration on the produce moms.com for all things, potatoes, but the best place for everything that you need to know about Idaho potatoes can be found at idahopotato.com. The Idaho potato commission website, just, I mean, talk about Recipe. everything you would ever want to know about potatoes. It's right. there. <laughs> Recipes more than you could ever make probably. Oh my gosh. You could, you could make a new recipe every day and I'm convinced you, you have like five years of recipes there <laughs> and you wouldn't repeat. It's amazing. It's an amazing resource. So with that, Jamie, um, it's been a true pleasure having you on, getting to know you, introducing you and, and as you know, the new CEO of the Idaho potato commission to our, to our audience here at the produce moms, we really appreciate you being here. Um, so final thoughts are yours that you get the final goodbye, but, uh, again, best of luck as you continue the great work of Idaho potato commission. And thank you for, for being our guest today. Thank you for having me. And, uh, we've covered a lot of different potato topics today, but, uh, we appreciate the support and, uh, you know, just remember when you're at the store, Idaho potatoes, and and it's and we 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 promote the fresh part of it, and that's kind of what you're the produce moms, but we also uh, support our 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 other processed industries as well, the uh, um, the frozen and the de high. Um, but more than anything, we're just glad to to let you have a chance to tell our story to your listeners, and if they have questions, they can ask you, or they can always um, ask us here at the Idaho Potato Commission. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Produce Moms podcast. If you or someone you know would like to be a featured guest, just send an email to Lori at theproducemoms.com. We know there is a Produce Mom in you because there's a Produce Mom in all of us. Join our community on Facebook and all social platforms. Help us change the way America eats. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.